So I hope you're all feeling good, refreshed, um, not too hot in this marquee. I appreciate you all coming out from the sun to spend some, well, 15 minutes with me now. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thanks to the WeShare team, because this is my first WeShare. Um, I don't know how I didn't know about this event. It's an amazing three days, amazing lineup. You lovely people coming together to share ideas and connect and um, inspire each other to do amazing things. So first off, well done to these guys for putting this on. Uh, we do a bunch of events ourselves. We know how much effort goes into these things. So um, yeah, it's truly inspiring. Um, I hate conferences, typically. I think a lot of people I meet here tend to as well. And I think part of the reason is they're just often made just to sell tickets, really. They're not there to do much else. And so, yeah, coming to a soulful event rather than a soulless event, like at a conference that I've seen before, then it inspires me. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Lawrence. I am the co-founder and uh, current title Chief Mischief Maker at the Happy Startup School. And um, along with an old school friend, um, I ran a digital agency, a kind of successful but pretty unremarkable, as it turns out, um, digital agency for about 10 years, which we um, ended up moving away from last summer. And if any of you have come from the agency world, the creative world, um, you probably know what I mean when I say I'm a recovering agency founder. Um, it's, uh, it was a great way to get an education about how to build things and to make things, but ultimately not a great way to live your life, in my experience. So we've moved on from that. Um, so we had a silly idea three years ago when we were on this journey working with founders and entrepreneurs, um, working on their businesses, working on their design, uh, designing their products. And um, part of the reason we stumbled upon this was because, like I said, we were in business, but we weren't business people. We were going to conferences, networking, but we weren't really um, people who enjoyed going to network. Um, we would go to pitch and um, sell, but we weren't really salespeople. So we were kind of confused entrepreneurs. We were in business not to make money. And if you look at TV and media and watch programs like Dragon's Den and Shark Tank in the US um, or The Apprentice, you believe that business is about being ruthless. It's about... Um, it's about money. It's about being hard-nosed and really focusing on profits at all else. Um, but I don't see that coming to places like this. It's just a, a world I don't understand. But a lot of the people who see that, it's, it's quite a damaging, damaging role model, I think. So I think the rules don't longer apply now. The old rules of business. These guys are dinosaurs. Or in my friend Jack Hubbard's uh, phrase, grey-suited mood hoovers. Um, and so when we started out, we started out with a question. And that question was one of those what-if questions. What if we brought more happiness to business? What would that look like? Um, why does business need to be so fucking serious? What's that about? Why does work need to be such a chore? You know, 73% of people in the US are disengaged at work. It's like more than two-thirds of the population. It's quite crazy. And that's the people at work. Um, Work-life balance. Why do we have to save ourselves for the margins of life, the weekends, the evenings? So these people are basically waiting for the weekend to come. They're, they're wasting away their lives. And why do we have to have one definition of success? So as individuals, we need the big house, the big car, the big salary, the bigger mortgage. Um, and if we're in business, we need hockey stick growth. We need to keep growing every year. We need to get the exit. We need to chase the, the sort of light at the end of the, at the tunnel, the, the money at the end of the rainbow. But why would you want to start out in business and think about selling it before you've even got into it. It's just crazy to me. So we started to look at, okay, what is success for everyone? And it turns out, success for me is different to success for you. Success is personal. And that's that journey we started on. So we started setting up the Happy Startup School with the intention to create the world's first business school that doesn't measure success in profits, but measures it in terms of happiness and impact. And that was a silly idea, I agree. But um, luckily, people like it. And you guys are here to hear about it which is even better. Um, so what started as a, a meet-up above a pub in London with about 20 people, and I think a dog as well, potentially, um, has turned into now a global community, which is about purpose. It's about meaning. It's about doing something positive in the world, as well as making yourself and the people around you happy too. So we've got founders, we've got budding entrepreneurs, we've got change makers, and leaders of teams and companies who want to do business differently, who really believe in a different way of doing business and not just focused on making money. So today we do all sorts of things. We run online courses. We, um, as was mentioned, run a summer camp, which is a three-day festival in September in the UK. This is our fourth year coming up. And we were recently voted by The Guardian as one of the top 10 business events in Europe, which we're pretty excited about. Um, and if you imagine we share on a 300-acre farm 
with lots of bell tents and music and silly dancing. It's kind of like that. So you should all come, definitely. Um, but I'm not here to give a sales pitch or talk about silver bullets and business, because I don't think they exist, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to share a couple of stories which hopefully might resonate with you and you might learn something from it. So seeing as you're here to hear about happiness, I thought I'd start with something really cheery. Death. <laughs> so has anyone heard of a guy called Sam Walton? No? Wow. Okay. So Sam Walton was the guy who set up Walmart in the US. He, um, he was basically one of the most revered entrepreneurs of his generation. He was on the Forbes rich list almost every year in the last few years of his life. And at the time of his death, he was worth $65 billion, which in 1992 was a lot of money. It's a lot of money now, but it was a lot of money then. And despite all the success, despite being a wealthy man, despite um, kind of achieving what he saw as his dreams, on his deathbed, the last three words he uttered were, I blew it. I blew it. So this is from his um, biography. It says he had the wealthiest pockets but the poorest soul. And in those last minutes of his life, he realized where he had failed. So despite building this um, stack of wealth, despite kind of building this business that he dreamed of, in those moments, he realized where he messed up. And for him, that was not spending more time with his family, not actually focusing on the things that mattered, and just being focused on that end game. And this isn't unusual. I read yesterday on the way to Paris that um, the Knight co-founder, Phil Knight, said that his number one regret was he didn't spend more time with his kids, because his... Um, one of his kids passed away when he was 34. And that's what we're seeing more and more. I hear these stories all the time at our events and, and at other events, is when the chips are down, when something happens, a life event kicks us in the teeth, we assess what's important. And I would say to you, if you've got an idea to do something, don't wait for that to happen. And this isn't unusual. This is from a, a book um, by someone called Bronnie Ware, who used to work with the dying. And she said, these are the five things that she would hear people see again and again at the time of their death. And a few stand out for me. One is, I wish I let myself be happier. Another one is, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. And also, I wish I'd been true to myself and not followed the dreams of other people, which often we do. So particularly if you're in business, don't listen to investors, don't listen to stakeholders, follow your gut. This is what most people look like at work. <laughs> <coughs> I've been there. It's not fun. Luckily, I got out, but I'm sure a few of you have too. And I think sometimes you might need to go on this journey to understand what work means, to actually understand how bad it can get before you realize how it's important to do good stuff, to create meaning. So really, money doesn't make us happy. Beyond a certain limit, beyond a certain threshold, money doesn't actually make us any happier. It just flatlines. So what we're seeing is this movement of people who actually believe in a different form of being rich. Money's important, money's fuel. It gives us uh, capital to grow our businesses if we want to. It gives us money to survive, but beyond that, it doesn't give us any meaning. So time, as I said, time is one of the key things that you can't buy back. Focusing on how can you curve more time into your day and actually potentially be a better founder or entrepreneur as a result. Not go copping out, but actually have more time to reflect on what you're doing rather than burning out and working 16-hour days. Relationships, like I said, focusing on the things that matter, focusing on your people, uh, your family, but also your customers, your employees too. Focusing on creating an amazing culture that can inspire them and inspire you to do great stuff. Having more autonomy. So if you go into business, why would you decide to follow the dreams of an investor rather than do it yourself? So actually focusing on why am I doing this in the first place? And generally for a lot of people, it's to have control over their day. And to have amazing experiences. You know, we put on these events not just because they're great business, because we love doing them. We love taking people out to the mountains. We went to India a few months ago, took 25 entrepreneurs out there. These are meaningful experiences that inspire us and actually have real impact. And mastery, getting better at something, learning every day, feeling like you're improving. These are things, this is the new form of currency, like making an impact. And even this guy, Richard Branson, seems to think we're onto something here. Um, it's easy to say when you're sitting on Necker Island in your hammock, but anyway, it's good validation. So in his book, Aaron Hurst talks about this rise of the purpose economy and how we're actually moving away from information and IT and technology to an age of purpose and meaning. And it's not just about fluffy stuff and doing the right thing. It's actually about how you can create great companies that are profitable, but actually make an impact in the world. And actually, as a founder, how you can focus on your individual uh, success as well as 
helping the world, others around you. And there's companies doing it, very successful companies like these guys. And as Alan de Botton said, he started his School of Life. Um, we just need to move further up the pyramid of needs. We need to start thinking about actually not just having functional relationships with the companies we buy from, but having real, deep, meaningful relationships, long-lasting relationships, getting beyond our basic needs. <laughs> <coughs> Or, as I found out earlier, charging my battery, which should have been there as well. Um, so what we've developed at the Happy Startup School is a very simple framework for anyone to take a new idea to market. And it's based on the mechanics of starting a business, which we still need, but it's also based on the human side too. And we're seeing more and more that people aren't doing business anymore, they're just being human. And that's what this is about, really. It's about creating human businesses. So this is the simple model we work towards, which is really starting with purpose. Um, it's about engaging the people you work with, but actually, it's about engaging yourself, because if you're not into it yourself, why else are you doing it? So it's starting with your own needs as a founder and the change you want to make, and then feeding that out to the team, the collaborators, the people that support you. And then through that, you create great customer experiences, which bring people back. Happy customers spend more money. Happy employees are more productive. Um, it's kind of common sense, but not everyone does it. And ultimately, if you're not driven by your values and your purpose, then every decision you make will go down to profits. So all I would say to you is if you've got co-founders or team members, work on this stuff because it's so important. It's better to find out early on rather than too late. So when I sort of fast forward to the end of my life, hopefully it's not too soon, um, I want to think about how did I measure my life? What was it that I did that made a difference in the world? And I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to be like this guy. And again, I don't want to hear more stories like that. So... All the work we do at the Happy Startup School is trying to get people to understand what their role is in the world and how you can actually fulfill that before it gets too late, before that, that moment where it all comes crashing down. So like I said, if you've got an urge to do something, start it today. If it's a kickstool, start it. It doesn't need to be the best world-changing idea, but by doing that, you'll find out amazing things about yourself and other people, and you'll just start doing things. You'll get in the habit. I know I'm preaching to the converted here, but... You guys are probably doing this already, but there's a lot of people out there that aren't. So just get started. Make a positive dent in the world. And ultimately, make happiness your business model. Thanks, guys.